Virginia, how are we doing today? Woo! Thank you for being here at the Richmond Capitol. This is really important. This is a great day for liberty. At least it is because you guys are here. This is really important stuff. Did you talk some sense into those guys over there? Did you? Did you? Did you tell them that we don't need more gun control? That what we need is politician control? I hope you told them that we will remember in November. We are, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. So we are here today because of Governor Blackface Northam. My friend Maj Ture is going to be speaking in just a few moments, and he's going to talk to you about how gun control is racist in its origins and application, and that's what this governor is pushing. He wants to use the Virginia Beach tragedy to push his own agenda to restrict our Second Amendment protected rights. Never let a crisis go to waste. Have you ever heard those words? Right? Remember that from the Obama administration? That's the motto of anti-gun Democrats today. Never let a tragedy go to waste, certainly like the one in Virginia Beach. The governor wants to make you less safe. He wants to make you more dependent on government for your protection. So he has a long list of restrictions that he wants to impose. For example, the governor says that universal background checks are going to make us safer. Hell no! Do you believe that? No! Hey, how well did that work in Virginia Beach? We all know the killer passed uh, at least one background check, if not more. In fact, if you look at the mass shootings that have occurred in this century, you would be hard-pressed to think of a mass shooting where the shooter didn't pass a background check. So how are background checks going to make us any safer? But that's not all. The governor wants to ban those evil assault weapons. Did anybody tell the governor that the killer in Virginia Beach used two handguns? You know, you just can't make this stuff up. See, that doesn't matter to the governor because you never let a tragedy go to waste. Then the governor also wants to repeal the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the preemption law. He wants local governments to be able to impose their own local gun bans. But of course, the problem is not that we have too little gun control. The problem is that gun control is costing lives. If it wasn't for the Virginia Beach ban on city employees carrying firearms, have you heard of Kate Nixon? She would have had a gun that day. She told her husband she wanted to bring a gun to work that day because she was concerned about this guy who ended up being the killer, but she chose not to because she was worried about the local gun ban, which could result in her getting fired. So sadly, that decision to leave her gun at home was a fatal one for her and 11 other people. You know, like the shooting at Virginia Beach, almost 98% of the public mass shootings in this country occur where? Gun-free zones. Gun -free zones, that's right. And of course, that's not making people any safer, is it? They're, they just become a magnet for criminals. I mean, look, let's face it. Bad guys don't go shoot up police stations or gun shows. They want to be where they're the only one with a gun. So they choose gun-free zones. And so here's the travesty. Kate Nixon was forced to choose between her job and her life. And that is a choice that no one should ever have to make. Are you with me on that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the same day that Kate Nixon was murdered, the, the Wisconsin press was reporting on a Milwaukee woman who used her concealed gun to shoot a larger, more powerful male who was attacking her with a club. She used her own gun gun to shoot that guy and end the assault. But see, that's how you take care of business. A good gal with a gun gets the job done every time. But of course, that's the point that Governor Blackface seems to miss, because time and time again, we see good people using guns to protect themselves to stop mass shootings. There was a firefighter in South Carolina. A doctor ended one in Pennsylvania. A husband on a date with his wife. How romantic. Stopped one in a Texas bar. An Uber driver in Chicago stopped a mass shooting. And then one of my favorites, a woman worshiping at a Colorado church with a concealed carry firearm, mortally wounded an armed invader 
who had more than a thousand rounds of ammunition on him, he wanted to commit the greatest mass shooting on American territory. But there was just one thing that got in his way, a woman with a gun. Because of her, because of her, not one person was killed inside the church except for the bad guy. You know, I could go point by point through the governor's proposals. Any one of us here could talk about and show how each one of those proposals would only make things worse, uh, uh, endanger us all the more. But I want to tell you the biggest problem is this. The governor and the anti-gun Democrats want to treat our rights like privileges. They want to treat them like favors that can be dispensed or withdrawn at will. But that's the problem because our rights do not come from government. They don't even come from popular opinion. Heck, they don't even come from a piece of paper like the Constitution, as good of a document as that is. No, our Declaration of Independence said it right. Our rights come from God. We are endowed to us by our Creator. And see, that's a game changer. Our rights, we can't even give them up. They're not ours to give away, nor can they be restricted by the government. And that's why our Second Amendment says, shall not be infringed. It doesn't say you can have a background check or that you can criminalize private sales or that you can limit magazine capacity or that you can impose red flag gun confiscation orders. No. Shall not be infringed means just that. Keep your hands off our gun rights, Governor. Now, regarding the gun confiscation orders that I just mentioned, Philip Van Cleve asked me to talk briefly about that because that's something that we've been fighting all over the country. Uh, we're fighting it in the Congress and, uh, of course, right here in Virginia. In fact, there are some Republican rhinos in this legislature here who are pushing red flag laws. Ooh. They deserve to be booed because that is heinous. These laws sanction the confiscation of firearms, and they do so without any due process whatsoever. No trial by jury, no having your attorney present, no um, facing your accuser, just boom, a judge takes the word of a person who may have a vendetta against you. I heard somebody earlier saying it legalizes swatting. I mean, that's exactly what this does, and you lose your gun rights. I mean, this is like the, mi the, the movie Minority Report on steroids, isn't it? You know, we're going to take your guns because we think that you might, I repeat, might use it in the future to commit a crime. So much for being proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt for something you've actually done. I mean, already the state directly to the north of us in Maryland, a man was gunned down because of red flag laws. Gary Willis, an African-American gentleman, was woken up by a loud knocking at his door at 517 in the morning. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I'm not expecting pizza deliveries at that time. So how do you answer the door when it's still dark outside and there's loud knocking at the door? With a gun! With a gun in hand! That, and that's exactly what Gary Willis did. He was probably expecting this could potentially be a burglary. Of course, it was the police, and now he's dead. Ironically, supporters of Red Flag say, oh, th we allow for due process. Well, Gary Willis didn't get any due process. And even if you do survive the gun confiscation, guess what? You then get to pay thousands of dollars to convince the judge that he made a mistake in allowing your guns to be taken. Good luck with that. That's not going to happen. Look, the government should be tasked with proving that you're guilty, not forcing you and me to prove that we're innocent. That totally has it backwards. Red flag laws have been an utter failure in every state they've been passed because real bad guys still get guns. But see, that doesn't matter. For gun control supporters, it's all about putting points on the board. It's simply about getting gun control passed. But that's where we can make a difference. Working together, that's why I'm so glad that you're here because we gotta tell Democrat legislators, we gotta tell the Republican Rhino legislators, no more gun control. Not one word. That's what our message has to be.
caught up. So let me end with this, just as a word of an encouragement, because look, the liberal media makes a lot of noise in favor of gun control. They're trying to dispirit you and me. But here's the truth. There are now more constitutional carry states in this country than there are states imposing red flag laws. How about that? Freedom is on the march. By the way, Virginia needs constitutional carry. You need to tell your legislators that. I want constitutional carry. But that's not the only indication that our gun rights are advancing in this country. For all the talk about school shootings, the truth is that last year, the number of school districts that are arming teachers doubled in just one year. That is good news. So our gun rights are quietly marching forward, although you're not going to hear it from the media. But working together, we can see freedom advance here in Virginia. So I want, I want you all to be encouraged, folks. Today is a great day for liberty. It's good for you to be here. Make sure to tell them we will remember in November. I want to thank you very much, and God bless.